Hey there, I'm Alan, welcome to my channel, and I'm making a tactics game from scratch. I've been missing for a few weeks, but for good reason, I moved into a new office. Woo! Also, Echo, I'm sorry, I don't know how to fix it yet. I've There's, there's things on the way, I promise it'll, be, it'll get better. For this video, I've been working on improving our basic tone based mechanics to basic combat mechanics. Wow. So, buckle up, and I'm going to talk you through all of the steps I took and mistakes I made to get here. And I made a lot of mistakes, let me tell you. Hello, what is up? It's your boy back in my new office with echoey sound. Uh, this is the day after I did the intro because the weather was too nice and I wanted to go and make cocktails and that's what I did. And now I'm a little bit hungover and tired and my energy's low, but uh, that's life, that's life. You gotta, you gotta enjoy this. It's, I'm living in Ireland, so you gotta enjoy the sun while you can, right? Uh, so combat mechanics, how do you do it? How does it work? Um, how do we make combat happen? You can split it into three categories, right? Um, calculating and displaying the attack range of a character, um, targeting a character once you're targeting an enemy then, and how do you display that to the user, and then uh, interacting with that character and displaying that also, right? So it's kind of like, so three different challenges that you have to get to get this working correctly. Um, the biggest challenge in this was, was how do you calculate range of an enemy? or the blah, 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 range of a character. You, cause there's, there's lots of ways to do it, right? And and some some games don't even do the range. They just kind of like, you move in. I think, I think the Skya is popping in my head. I think with the Skya, you, you move to your place and then the game just kind of tells you, oh, you can attack this guy. But that's not a big deal because you can undo the movement if you want to. But I haven't done that yet. And I think more information is always good. So I wanted a way to display the range to the user. Uh, My first attempt at getting this to work was by adding my attack range onto my movement range. And I looked something like this. Uh, I thought this might be a good solution, a nice easy solution to get done, but I realized that it's just not going to be good enough. It kind of looks like your character can attack anyone from any position when realistically to attack someone at the edge of your attack range, you would need to move to the edge of your movement range, if that makes sense. So this just wasn't gonna really cut the cake, honestly. So I had to go for a different plan. Basically, when a character starts his turn, we call it something called set distance, which is what sets the characters. It's what sets tells the grid um, to show the character's max movement range, right? And so that's how it how that happens. So what I did is I refactored that code to now accept any kind of position and get range from that. So uh, when the mouse moves, we can call the same set distance method, except instead of a character's movement, it's an enemy, it's a character's attack range, and it looks kind of like this, which is I think the best way for me to do it. I can't think of a better way to display it. Um, and it works pretty nicely. And it's, I'm obviously, I'm happy because it's reusing it's reuse code. And, you know, reuse, anytime you can reuse code, it's a win. If you, if anyone's curious and you want to know how that distance is calculated, um, there is a video where I talk about it in the past. I think it's two videos ago. Uh, so yes, yeah, so check it out if you want to check that out, if you, if you give a fuck. Um, so next, what would happen is your character has to move and we can try to figure out who the character is going to target. How do you display that to the, to the user? So, so in the beginning, my first attempt was just to kind of put the camera on top of the guy you're targeting. Uh, it's not good, not quite good. It wasn't quite good enough. It was just didn't. It just didn't. It was wasn't obvious enough who you were targeting and who you were looking at. So I was able to. So I decided to reuse my character UI, flip it to the other side, and have it pop out and in a nice juicy way and, and that was good still not quite enough yet so i went even further adding more juice the more juice you can get the better uh so i started to fade the character in and out i i made a little um or what you even call it a targeting indicator that drop down which is so now it's as obvious as you can get who you're looking at um the only thing is i think i would rather have the characters kind of fade fully white but to do that you would need a shader and i just wasn't asked right in the shader so i'm just I'm just removing, I'm just making the character yellow. Because obviously white is just the, the sprite's normal color, right? So yellow is the next best thing to white, in my opinion. I don't know. Um, yeah, and then that's it. That's the character. Your character knows who it's targeting. And then you you got to choose your action. How are you going to do it? That? And this has a lot of more work to do. All I have is when I press a button, I do damage that character based on my character's um, attack stat. And that's, and that's that. And, and, and then we need to add ways to display that to user that this guy's been damaged so a classic way to do that is by changing the color 
of the character to um like a cut like a like a damage flick off so red to white to normal is the usual way um i can't i've seen i can't remember where i've seen that before but it's pretty common and then obviously i had to juicy camera shake camera shake makes everything better and then once you got those three things figured out plus you know the grid based movement that from the previous video and um, you got yourself a you almost got yourself a tactic scene still a lot more to do but it's getting there it's it's a loop and yeah so but still plenty more to do in the future so obviously we need to add more ui and abilities and stuff that you can choose from instead of just having an attack attached to a button i need to give create some very simple ai for the enemies so i'm not controlling both teams and there was something else and the last thing i do actually really want to do is get back to the map generation and adding height to our pathfinding that doesn't currently work so that's something that i'm dreading i think it's going to be an absolute nightmare to get that done but uh i'll figure it out i think i think i'll figure it out i hope i figure it out and that's it really uh i feel like that's a bit rushed of an explanation i'm feeling a bit rusty i haven't i haven't recorded myself talking in like oh, six weeks now or something since i since the last one so uh a bit rusty so apologies guys um uh, not that i was ever really good at doing this but uh taking a break definitely isn't a good idea at, th at this early on so uh, thanks, thanks for watching, thanks for your patience, and now that we have combat, I think there's only one thing left to do. Before I wrap up the video, I just want to give a big shout out to the new subscribers that just joined. We just hit 174 and that's huge to me. I can't believe it. And um, even though I haven't really been uploading lately, it's the number still going up, which is just, I'm just really grateful for it. So to all the new guys that joined in, uh, thanks. And thanks to everyone who keeps coming back and thanks just for watching because it means a lot and it's great for my motivation to keep me walking. Um, yeah and that's and that's it uh the next video will probably be another little bit a while a little, little bit away as well i uh i signed up for this collab thing that i'm gonna do uh because you know obviously i have loads of time free time in my hands and i can take on extra projects because i'm clever like that but anyway i committed to it and that will be a video coming out in the middle of august so sign up so subscribe if you want to see that 
I can't give you any information about that, but it's not nothing, nothing huge. It's just a fun little thing. I think that might be like, might be kind of cool. And uh, yeah, so once I get that done, I'm gonna be working on that next. I think just to get it done, and then I'll move back into doing the AI stuff probably. Um, so yeah, lots of cool things coming up. And again, just thank you. <laughs> it means a lot. Cheers. Bye.